It's 1989, and the latest battle in the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union plays out here, in Afghanistan. The Soviet army tries to force communism on the people, but the Afghans, with America's support, fight back. An Afghan rebel named Mohammed Omar readies his rocket-propelled grenade and waits for a Soviet convoy to approach. He is the future ruler of Afghanistan. Here, Omar is anonymous, one of thousands of Afghan holy warriors known as the Mujahideen. His only claim to fame is his role as a mullah, or prayer leader, in a mosque in Kandahar. On this day, Mullah Omar has set up an ambitious ambush. Omar later describes his plan to Rahi Mullah Yousafzai, one of a tiny handful of journalists to ever meet the reclusive future leader. He said that there was a Soviet army convoy passing on this main road. As the Soviet convoy approaches, Omar takes aim. His perfect shot levels one of the Soviet vehicles. Omar and his men quickly scatter as the Russians unleash a deadly barrage of return fire. The Mujahideen find momentary refuge in a nearby mosque. Soviet bullets follow them, raking the mosque's walls. But what looks to be the end of Omar's life turns out to be just the beginning of his legend. In the chaos of the firefight, a piece of shrapnel hits Omar in the right eye. His eye is ruined, dangling from its socket, but still Omar continues to fight. He removed it from it, the socket and he threw it out and he kept fighting, although it was blood falling on his face. Omar survives the Russian assault, and soon the streets of southern Afghanistan are buzzing with tall tales about the courage of the six foot six mullah. Later, reports suggest Omar's right eye was probably removed after the fighting in a Pakistani hospital. But the legend is what endures. There are so many stories uh, attached to his name. Omar's destiny is to lead the Taliban, a powerful movement to bring stability to a country ripped apart by war. But instead of the Islamic utopia Omar envisions, the Taliban will turn Afghanistan into the world's worst humanitarian disaster. It was very hard to control yourself to do not cry. They were beating people always. Every single tree was burned. Every single house was damaged. That's what, what they were doing with Afghans. During the two and a half decades war is going on in my country, all the, these times and these different regimes, I will suffer from war. Even this landscape bears the scars from decades of violence. It's hard for many Afghans to remember a time without fighting. But it wasn't always like this. Afghanistan once knew peace. And that's where this tumultuous story begins. It's 1973 and King Zahir Shah rules the country as a modern democracy with free elections, women's rights, and strong international relationships. Afghanistan was not a threat to anybody. Hippies from the 60s who lived in Kabul thought it was a great place to live. But later that year, the prosperity starts to unravel. Massive political upheaval is about to set Afghanistan on a ruinous path. First, King Zahir Shah falls in a power struggle and is banished to exile in Rome. Over the next six years, new leaders come and go, and Afghanistan's inner turmoil helps make it an inviting target for the most powerful force in the region, the Soviet Union.